Certain religious beliefs had led to much bloodshed throughout the world, and a situation in India is definitely no uh, exception. So apparently thousands of women in India, specifically rural parts of India, are being tortured and murdered after they're accused of sorcery. Now, uh, the Washington Post did a really great job in detailing this story. In fact, they noticed that from 2000 to 2012, as many as 2,500 women were tortured and murdered after they were accused of sorcery. Now, some people might say that, of course, this is solely a religious thing, but the reality is it has a lot to do with socioeconomic status, what caste or which caste these women are from, and whether or not they've done anything to uh, break societal norms or expectations. In fact, uh, according to the Washington Post, often a woman is branded a witch so that you can throw her out of the village and grab her land, or to settle scores, family rivalry, or because powerful men want to punish her for spurning their sexual advances. Sometimes it's used to punish women who question social norms. Now this is obviously a disgusting, despicable story. In some cases the women are forced to eat uh, feces and they're tortured in the worst possible ways before they're murdered, sometimes in front of their own children. And I know that this is a difficult story to discuss, but I want to know what uh, the panelists think. Uh, Whitney, let me start with you. Make your point. I mean, you know, unfortunately this has been going on since the beginning of time. You know. It, uh, Casting women as as witches or invo being involved in sorcery has literally been going on since we can remember, and it's always used as a scapegoat of things. It's atrocious that in this day and age, it's still being used as a viable means of you know conviction in the most damning sense. You know, death really. Yeah, it's crazy. Whitney. Well, it, you know, when I was reading the story, it, re it reminded me a lot of the Salem witch trials, and there's a show on on it now actually, and, and it's. I think it's really infuriating and frustrating when we look at international rights of women and you think, wow, I think I'm having problems as a woman in America and then you think of what's happening in other parts of the world and the fact that these women are also outspoken against some of the things that are happening in their own society and that's one of the reasons why they're being cast as witches mm -hmm. and that you have somebody like a shaman who if you think of it is also on that same level saying you're a witch, you're a witch, you're not a witch. Mm -hmm. I mean, who gives him that right? and how is this even decided in that society? And I think it's it's problematic and maybe some more attention should be drawn to it. Yeah, you hear stories like this or stories of, um, you know, Boko Haram uh, going after young girls and enslaving them and selling them off for $12 a piece. And, and you realize that there's so much brutality against women throughout the world. And the best way to kind of solve issues like that is to spread education. You educate people and you make them realize that, hey, these ridiculous beliefs, the, the, the notion of sorcery is absolutely ridiculous and taking a human life as a result of these beliefs doesn't make any sense, mm -hmm. right? right? And I think the U.S. way of handling things is to invade countries, which is, you know, part of the reason why we invaded Iraq. Oh, we want to, you know, liberate these women. We want to free them. But you can't have that double standard. The best way to handle it is through education. And I feel sick to my stomach to know that this is still going on in the world. Mm -hmm. The question for this story is, have you ever felt like <coughs> you uh, were hurt in any way simply because you were a woman? Aside from when I was in sixth grade, I wanted to play the drums and there was auditions and I felt like I didn't get put through because I was a, a girl at the time. Um, but you know, in, other than that, I feel like it hasn't hurt me so much as it has empowered me and made me feel like I need to work harder, you know, and everything. And, and part of that is that I, I'm lucky enough to live in a place that, you know, as much as we can talk down or criticize the United States, we still are given a ton of liberty here. And, you know, luckily I can view any resistance I've been put up in, in my face as a source of empowerment. And that's really, I think I've actually grown because of that. That's really struggle. interesting. It's like overcoming obstacles. Yeah, for so, sure. Wendy? Well, it's interesting, you know, the ability to play drums. Mine was the ability to play baseball or softball. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was first learning, you'd go up at bat or I would go up at bat and all the boys in my co-ed team will come closer because there was no way that I could possibly hit a home run. And they were right the first couple of times. Mm -hmm. And luckily I have an amazing dad who said, you're just as good as any of the boys on that team. And we would go to batting practice and he'd help me. And one day specifically, I remember going up to bat and all the boys coming in closer and I hit that ball. Like, and it was, yeah. a, and it was a home run. And I was like, yeah, you better recognize like I'm running. <laughs> And the next time I went at bat, they went further out. And it's like you establish, like, I'm here to play a game, you know, and I'm not going to let, 
you make me feel like I'm less than, but I did feel small. I did feel I'm just a girl. I'm not as strong. I'm not yeah. as self-confident. And it took, you know, somebody like my dad to show me otherwise. But I think about how many other little girls don't have a yeah. father figure like that or just a role model like that that can encourage them and help them you know, be their very best. I think in certain cases, just merely being a woman makes you the underdog. And I think that mm -hmm. baseball, softball case is a perfect example of that. Um, actually, something recently happened. Uh, I hosted the political show, uh, of, or the political portion of the Young Turks by myself yesterday. And it was hilarious because I did a report on, um, you know, federal judges voting down or, or striking down a specific portion of the Affordable Care Act. And it was a very, straight news report and in the end I gave a little bit of analysis and commentary, nothing big. And one of the most upvoted comments was, is it just me or does it seem like Anna's really full of herself? <laughs> and it was like, oh, wow. I just did a news report, why do I seem full of myself? I, I didn't sit there and talk about myself right. or what I'm wearing or what I'm doing, but I think that a lot of that has to do with, oh, here's a woman talking about a really serious topic on a political news show, she's young. She, what does she know? Yeah, what does she know? Who does right. she think she is? She's full of herself. Right. So I think that you know that's just one example. A lot of times it's really difficult to be a young woman in the position that I'm in because people think that you shouldn't be taken seriously. Yeah, and you're so. challenging whoever that person was, their their level of intellect, yeah. you know? They're, they're well, lashing out. Full of self-confidence, yeah. what? How dare she not yeah. be a confident woman? <laughs> oh, right. I don't like that. Go back to the kitchen. Yes, that's right. exactly right. I get that She's comment all the time. Oh, I get that comment yeah. all the time. No. But I want to know what you guys think, um, has your um, gender or your sex had any type of impact on anything in life? Do you think that it's ever been a downside of uh, your work environment or anything else you've experienced? And also, what do you think about this story in India and other stories involving the brutalization of women throughout the world? Share your thoughts in the comment section below and we'll see you guys soon.